Hey there, Discover Family Church. Pastor Johnny here. I, 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 I trust and hope and pray that you guys are having just a great start to your day if you're watching this when we release it in the morning. Uh, but if, if not, then I, I hope whatever is going on in your day that it's going great. I really do. I pray for you guys all the time. I miss you guys so much. I really do. I miss seeing you every week. But I love you so much and thank you for being a part of what we do here. Uh, today, I'm going to continue right in uh, Matthew. Uh, and we're in Matthew chapter 5, which is the Sermon on the Mount. And it's, you know, Jesus' is pretty much most famous sermon that we see that he gave. And, and, and I want to read a few verses from it that, that we've all heard, but I want to outline what they are. Uh, and it's chapter 5 of Matthew, verse 3 through 7. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. He goes on with more blessings. But these first five blessings that we see right here, uh, they affirm a real, the really important principles and help us understand what Jesus was meaning when he delivered the Sermon on the Mount. You see, you see, the Sermon on the Mount is not a manual for how you win favor with God. Because, uh, newsflash, you can't win flavor, favor with God. You can't win flavor with Him either. Uh, but you can't win favor with God because you're not good enough. No matter what you do, you're His kid. You're not going to get more favor by doing a better job. That's not the way... It, he works. That's the way love works. It's not the way it works with our kids. Let's be really honest. If you ask me which one of my sons is my favorite, I'm going to tell you I don't have a favorite. Uh, you know, overall. I mean, there are moments when one might be another favorite over others, but that's just in moments. But, but the truth is, is that each one of my sons is my favorite for a different reason. Arliss is my favorite for a reason, and Linus for another, and Texas for another. And, and, and I love these boys with all my heart. And, and God looks at us the same way. And so this is not a blueprint for how you get favor with God. And instead, Jesus is giving us a manuscript on how he expects us to live once we've already found that grace and love that he's offering. This isn't how to get good enough for God. This is, hey, you've already found me. Here's how you should live. Let me break it down verse, you know, I'm going to go break it down real quickly through these verses. You know, okay, let's, let's go through each one. That, Blessed are the, the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And, and, and what that is, is he's talking to the people who, uh, who know they're sinners. They know they're broken. And they understand that they don't have the spiritual resources to do the things that God asks. They understand that their spirit is poor. But when we accept God's grace and love, then we get to live in his spirit, which is rich. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, who recognize it. For theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn. Uh, where's that one at? Let me find it here. Blessed are those who uh, mourn, uh, and, you know, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those... Uh, who uh, hunger and thirst for righteousness, uh, for they shall be satisfied. And when we, we see those two verses, what we are seeing is, is people that have experienced disaster, the disaster that comes from disobedience to what God has for their lives. People who understand what the disobedience we have has led to in this world. That we live in a broken world. If, if you don't realize it yet, you, you should. We live in a broken world. And he's saying, hey, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who recognize that sin is more than just you messing up for a second. But it's what breaks our planet. And it's what breaks the heart of God. And whenever we recognize that, all of a sudden we can start trying to get beyond it um, because those who are more blessed, blessed are those, those who are hunger and thirst after righteousness those are people that, that recognize that their true position is weakness and that we serve a God whose true position is strength 
It says, Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And, and, and what we're seeing here is, is, is God is saying, have humility. Have humility. Treat other people with kindness. Don't put yourself up front. Instead, put others ahead of you. The merciful, what we're seeing in the, in blessed are those who, who are merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Those are people that understand that they're broken and they're messed up and they need mercy. And whenever you are merciful to other people, that means you're recognizing that you need mercy too. See, see Jesus isn't outlining how to have favor with God. He's outlining how to live once you've already found him. You know, the Sermon on the Mount, it describes how those of us who have already decided to follow Jesus are called to demonstrate God's character to demonstrate God's love and his grace and his mercy and to demonstrate his kingdom in this world. And he's telling us right here, you demonstrate it through the character in your life. So I encourage you today, find the character in your life and walk in humility, walk in meekness. Mourn for what's happening in the world around you and the things that you've done that have been wrong. Mourn for those things, but, but hunger and thirst for righteousness because you understand you're not good. When you live like that, you're demonstrating to the planet what it means to serve Jesus. That it's not about standing on a soapbox and yelling and screaming at somebody's face. It's about saying, hey, I'm messed up and I'm broken, but Jesus loves me just like I am and he loves you too. Church, I love you so much. I can't wait to see you this weekend. Make sure to check out the kids' video. Uh, it comes out tonight at 5 o'clock. And uh, make sure to invite some friends for Sunday. It's going to be a really cool service this coming Sunday morning, 10 a.m. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow.